Confidence in General Motors may have been buoyed yesterday by better than expected May sales, but our next guest says the American public, in his words, had their rights trampled by the government's bankruptcy plan. Congressman Eric Cantor is House Minority Whip and a member of the Ways and Means Committee, joins us from Washington. Congressman, good to have you back. Good morning to you. Carl, good morning. What do you mean by that? Well, listen, I mean, th there are so many individuals out there um, who have put some of their life savings into an investment because GM stood for a solid long-term investment and expected returns. But along with their investment came certain protections and rights, uh, certain laws which governed their ability to reclaim their money. And what we saw happened over the last several weeks, not only the GM bankruptcy, but the Chrysler situation as well, is an utter disregard for some of the senior citizens and individuals in Main Street America uh, and frankly had their rights trampled and instead those rights and the value attached to them have been uh, put towards the benefit of some uh, politically favored class. So you're, you're referring to the bondholders, right, who the, maybe were not treated as we might have expected at going into bankruptcy. Well, and it, you're it, trying to take that, that issue, which was largely a group of banks, and turn it into a populist issue? Well, well Carl, it's not really a, a group of banks, necessarily. I mean, you've got individuals who've invested their money directly into bonds and or into mutual funds that hold these bonds. Uh, and if we see what happened now, there was a lot of pressure put on prior to the filing of bankruptcy um, to f basically force uh, these bondholders uh, into an inferior position. And really what this says, though, Carl, is we don't have the certainty of expectation anymore. And when you're an investor and you're looking to put your capital at risk, how is it that we expect that to continue when the government, basically the White House by fiat, is going to dictate uh, who gets what if there is trouble in a certain investment? Yeah. Well, obviously, this, is not, this is not the America that we know. No, it's not. And I think most would agree that it's... it's it's unfathomable what's happened to GM. I mean, look at what they're getting for Hummer. They're selling it to some no-name Chinese company for under $500 million. What were they supposed to do? What would the well, GOP have done differently? Well, well Carl, you know, th this is really unfathomable. You're right. For the government to now go in, uh, we're going to have $70 billion of exposure from the taxpayer standpoint put into this car company. Nobody in Washington knows how to run a car company. How in the world did we go and put tens of billions of dollars now at risk? What we should have done is let the market work. We shouldn't have gone ahead and pumped these taxpayer dollars yeah, in. Congressman, you, you, the Bush administration just kicked this can right down the road. Uh, uh, you know, we get the bridge loan that we knew was just going to kick it to the Obama administration. I, I think that instead of being, uh, maybe it's a little bit disingenuous yeah, to say right. that, that we wouldn't have saved them, but maybe we wouldn't have... Uh, favored the UAW to the exclusion of all the other well, parties. Maybe that's what the GOP would have been well, listen, done I, different. Joe, you know, this was an instance where I certainly differed with the prior administration because I didn't feel that it was appropriate for the government to be putting uh, good money after bad. Yeah. I think all of us can look at the model in Detroit and understand uh, what was wrong and structurally compare that to the other manufacturers uh, in the right-to-work states and see what we needed to do. So now what we're seeing, as you suggest, is the White House coming in and favoring the UAW, basically um, making the rights of those individual bondholders inferior, outside any kind of legal framework whatsoever. There has been a downright suspension of the law, and if we want America to continue to be the place where global investment capital comes, and we want investors to take risks in this country to create opportunity, this is not the right way to go. Some might argue, Congressman, that that is sort of akin to having someone help you repair their house but uh, but complaining about the color of paint they used on the walls. I mean, this was a company that if it had filed for bankruptcy 10 years ago, who knows what the market effects would have been. It filed for Chapter 11 this week, and markets are positive for the year. I mean, don't you think you're, you're almost nitpicking, given the amount of trouble the administration had to tackle? No, because, listen, I think that we have uh, now seen a direction which is going to... Uh, I think spelled trouble down the road. Look at what happened over the weekend. Uh, you know, last week we saw interest rates go up. You saw consumers, you saw home buyers now face higher mortgage interest rates. So all of a sudden the administration decides, look, we've got to go and 
fan out across the world and make sure that our investors know that we are going to deal with all these problems and we're going to balance the budget. The problem is when Secretary Geithner was in China, um, much of the audience in one instance uh, really laughed at the suggestion that somehow Congress uh, and the White House were going to be able to we, trim the deficit. We saw that headline, and it's unclear we to us. About yeah, we, we weren't sure if it was that or if it was the joke they made by pulling up a, an old picture of someone yeah. who could have been his girlfriend while he was there. They was did a, a, who, there was a who's on first bit going yeah. on, too, well, there. Well, well Becky, I can, I can tell you this. You know, you look at what's going on in Congress this week and put it in the context of the suggestion that perhaps that we're going to balance the budget. We've got the wartime uh, appropriations uh, report coming to the floor of the House, perhaps. And that was an 80-some billion dollar bill. Well, all of a sudden, in conference, they have now attached another $108 billion to that bill. And you know what that money's for? That money is for a global bailout. It is. We've got, we're going to go and borrow that money to put it into the IMF. Uh, so that now there are more countries who can have a bailout. Now, how does that make sense when we're going to go borrow that money from the Chinese? The Chinese haven't even committed to put their own money into the IMF. This really spells a lot of trouble off in the future, and we ought to go, look, it's time to trim the sales. It is time for us to put some accountability into the system. Stop flushing out all these taxpayer dollars with no accountability. The, the vice president yesterday said, sure, there's going to be some scam artists I'm having to do with this stimulus money. Sure, there's going to be some waste. You know, that's unacceptable right now. You can't have that given the situation that we're in. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a great piece in the journal today. The GOP ain't dead yet, well, suggest, suggesting that the party uh, yeah. in 2012 associates the Democrats with Wall Street. Right. And then in their, in their words, then the Republicans will have the Democrats but, for lunch. But I hear there's nobody, there's no stars in the GOP. So you better have some broad shoulders there, uh, Rep Representative uh, Canada. I mean, we didn't know about the president five years ago that much either. So it can come out of, out of nowhere, but you got your work cut out for you. you know? Well, Joe, listen, it really is time for us to put some accountability back into all of this. Yeah. I mean, this, this extreme spending, the craziness that now has... Uh, taken hold in Washington as far as expanding taxpayer dollars has got to stop. Congressman, thanks for the time. We'll check in with you later. Thank you. Congressman Eric Cantor.